Phenomenology. What is it? Within the spectrum of 20th century Western philosophy, phenomenology is, in the broadest sense, stood out as the primary concern which sought to explain aspects of individual human consciousness. Phenomenology argues that real-world phenomena are made up of circumstances and substances which are understood through human consciousness, contrary to semiological theories where an object's meaning is inherent within that object, regardless of any external perception. Phenomenology focuses on the phenomena which are dependent on human experience, such as temporal and spatial awareness, attention span, um, intentional actions, and emotional response, of course. Now, although many European phenomenologists have often contradicted and disagreed with the specific ways in which concepts operate within human consciousness, there is in fact a shared agreement on the philosophy of experience. Phenomenological thought is human-centred. Over the first half of the 20th century, phenomenologists such as Edmund Husserl, Martin Heidegger and Maurice Merleau-Ponty formed arguments which would come to establish a more broad definition of phenomenological thought. Now, in 1913, the German philosopher Edmund Husserl published his writing Ideen or Ideas, which argued that one should seek to detach oneself from judgment and assumption in order to examine an object in and of itself. He defines the term epoche or epoche as pure self-reflection, exhibiting the most original evident facts being into view in the outlines of idealism. Purcell argues that phenomenological reduction is a way of restoring our experience of an object to its origins rather than stripping an object of its qualities, and that a suspension of assumption is an essential part of conducting phenomenological thought. In 1927, the German philosopher Martin Heidegger completed his work Sein und Zeist, or Being and Time, which attempts to re-energise the concept of being, or Dasein, as he calls it, as a self-awareness of our existence, in contrast with what he calls Das Nicht, or the nothingness in society. Heidegger argues that we often live our lives without self-awareness, and are born into a world that distracts us from our consciousness. However, a criticism of Heidegger's philosophy is the lack of the body's role in understanding the world, which in fact the, the French philosopher Maurice Merleau-Ponty explains in his 1945 writings Phenomenologie de la Perception, Phenomenology of Perception. Merleau-Ponty describes the relationship between the mind and body as essential in gaining knowledge about the real world, arguing that the body is our general medium for having a world. In the writings of Merleau-Ponty, Heidegger and Husserl, it is clear that the phenomenology seeks to use human consciousness as a way of understanding the world around us. Now, The 20th century saw a clear focus of the idea of being in situated moments of consciousness and self-awareness, and that we should engage with the world around us as self-focused beings. A focus on self-consciousness was also a concern of composers writing during the beginnings of music as an experimental discipline, in which Jenny Gottschalk describes the focus is ontological, on the being in that collective space and what transpires in the place and time of the performance and in the minds of those who attend. Phenomenological qualities such as temporal awareness and fluctuating attention are the primary concerns of many composers today, but can be traced back to the writings around the time of Heidegger and Husserl. For a composer to write with a phenomenological awareness, it may be assumed that the inherent musical meaning must be dis disregarded, or at the very least, not the primary concern of the music. It may also be assumed that the listener's 
individual forms of these associations. Therefore, a composer with a phenomenological awareness had to distance the listener from their own associations. The French composer Eric Satie, who described his music as musique d'omblement, or furniture music, wrote unresolving and cyclic music that placed the listener in a position that their attention may fluctuate and their focus may shift between the music and the world around them. In 1893, Satie wrote a piece for a piano called Vexations, which includes a short bass theme and accompanying semitonal chords which are repeated 840 times, producing an entire cyclical work of around 8 hours, leading the listener towards an emancipation of all sonic assumption and harmonic expectation. Although the piece was largely conceptual, through use of repetition and tonal ambiguity, I guess encourages the listener to become lost in this sound world, engaging their inner consciousness rather than pursuing in any sort of inherent musical narrative. Historically, the sense of music chronology has grown out of a dichotomy between tension and resolution. This chronology is described by musicologists as the contrast between tension as both a sensory dissonance and a cognitive dissonance or instability, and resolution as a sensory consonance or cognitive consonance or stability. In Satie's music, although the harmonic language is not explicitly atonal, being the type of harmonic language the American musicologist Mark DeVoto refers to as tonal chromaticism. He often stays in the same state of unresolved dissonance with no explicit direction except for final cadential moments, which themselves are often sparse. It seems that a state of constant tonal chromaticism may lead to an increase in the levels at which one perceives music. The use of tonal chromaticism generates a static harmonic plane, eradicating the tension between sensory and cognitive dissonance and consonance. The absence or simplicity of the musical structure, along with the emancipation of any sort of diatonic narrative, may lead to an immobile aesthetic, inviting the listeners to freely move around the sonic space, rather than their attention being guided by any musical intrinsic narrative. Thanks very much for watching.